Hey, Shalom, Israel, Mosai, and Christ bless. I'm Captain Mattathias, to my right. Officer Jediah. And to my left. Officer Joshua. All right, today we're shooting another 15 minutes with the captains. Today's topic, Christ in the Old Testament. All right, we're going to jump right into it. Give me Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 4. The book of Isaiah chapter 41, verse 4. Come on. Who have wrought and done it? Calling the generations from the beginning. From where? From the beginning. Come on. I, the Lord. Who has done it? I, the Lord. The what? The first and with the last. Uh-huh. I am he. All right. So the Lord is telling us he's the first and the last. He's the one responsible for all of these things. Give me Revelation chapter 1 verse 8. The book of Revelation chapter 1 and verse 8. Come on. I am Alpha. He is what? I am Alpha. Remember he said he's the first. Come on. And Omega. And the last. Read. The beginning and the ending. Come on. Saith the Lord. Saith who? Saith the Lord. Read. Which is and which was. So which is and which was in time past. Come on. And which is to come. And which is to come because the Messiah is going to come back one day. All right. From there. Give me the book of Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9. The book of Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9. Come on. Rejoice greatly. O daughter of Zion. O daughter of who? O daughter of Zion. Read. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Come on. Behold, thy king cometh. Thy who? Thy king cometh. Come on. Unto thee. Mm -hmm. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass. Riding upon a what? Riding upon an ass. Come on. And upon a colt, the foal of an ass. So, we see in the Old Testament here in Zechariah that it's prophesied that a king would ride upon an ass. Not just a king, but the king of Israel. That's From right. there, give me the book of Matthew, the 21st chapter and the first verse. The book of Matthew, chapter 21 and verse 1. Come on. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem, and were come unto Bethphage, unto the Mount of Olives, mm -hmm. then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied in a colt with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. So you have to understand the Messiah is telling them exactly what to do. Why is he doing this? Because he's been from the beginning all the way to the end. You have to understand the Messiah is about to allow this prophecy to come to pass. All right, come on. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, the Lord hath need of them. The Lord hath need of them because this is spoken of the Holy Ghost. Meaning what? It was prophesied in the past and it's going to come to light. Come on. And straightway he will send them. Read. All this was done that it might be fulfilled. That it might be what? That it might be fulfilled. Come on. Which was spoken by the prophet saying. Read. Tell the daughter of Zion. Behold thy king cometh. Thy who? Thy king cometh. Come on. Unto thee. Meek and sitting upon an ass. Meek and doing what? Sitting upon an ass. Uh huh. And a coat of foal of an ass. Remember what he said in verse 3. If somebody give you a hard time, say no. The Lord needed this. Meaning what? There was nothing anybody could do to stop this prophecy from coming to pass. Alright, All right, from there, give me the book of Zechariah chapter 12. Zechariah chapter 12 verse 9. Come on. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. Uh -huh. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace. The spirit of what? The spirit of grace. Who brought grace? Our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Come on. And of supplication. Uh huh. And they shall look upon me. Upon who? Upon me. This is Zechariah. Why does it keep saying upon me? Give me that in the book of First Peter's. I'm shooting from the hip, I know. Give me 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 10. Why does he keep saying me when it says Zechariah wrote this? Read what you got. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 10. Come on. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently. Uh-huh. Who prophesied of the grace. Of the what? Of the grace. Didn't we just read about that prophecy of grace in Zechariah 12? Come on. That should come unto you. Unto you, not everybody, but to the nation of Israel. Read. Searching what? Or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ. The Spirit of who? The Spirit of Christ. Come on. Which was in them. Which was in who? Which was in them. Zechariah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Moses, David. The Spirit of Christ was in the prophets because he was there from the beginning. Let's go back. Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 9. Come on. And it shall come to pass in that day 
that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. Uh -huh. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication. Read. And they shall look upon me. Upon who? Upon me. Who's the he? Who's the me? It's Jesus the Christ. Read. Whom they have pierced. Whom they have what? Whom they have pierced. Come on. And they shall mourn for him. As one mourneth for his only son. Come on. And shall be in bitterness for him. As one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. Let's see that prophecy come to pass. It says whom they have pierced. John chapter 19 verse 33. The book of John chapter 19 and verse 33. Come on. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already. They broke not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side. Did what? Pierced his side. A soldier did what? Pierce his side. Come on. And forthwith came there out blood and water. Uh huh. And he and he that saw it bear record. Did what? Bear record. Read. And his record is true. Uh huh. And he knoweth that he said it. And he knoweth that he said true. That ye might believe. Come on. For these things were done. That the scripture should be fulfilled. That the what? That the scripture should be fulfilled. Which scripture? Zechariah chapter 12. 9 and 10. All right, from there, let's go to the book of Psalms, the second chapter, and pick up at the sixth verse. The book of Psalms, chapter 2, verse 6. Come on. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son. Thou art is what? Thou art my son. Uh huh. This day have I begotten thee. So the scripture says, He will set his king. And then he refers to the Messiah as his son. From there, give me 1 John 4, 9. 1 John chapter 4, verse 9. Come on. The book of 1 John chapter 4 and verse 9. Come on. And this was manifested, the love of God toward us. Toward who? But toward us. Possessive. Who's the love of God going towards? Talking about the nation of Israel. Come on. Because that God sent his only begotten son. He did what? Sent his only begotten son uh -huh. into the world. That we might live through him. From there, give me the book of Deuteronomy. No, no, no. Give me John chapter 6 and 14. Give me John chapter 6 verse 14. Because it said his son in 1 John, right? Let's see what it says in John 6, 14. The book of John chapter 6 verse 14. Come on. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth. That prophet that should come into the world. Now, I don't want you to get lost because we're going to touch another precept that goes into this as well. Remember what it says. That prophet that should come into the world. Read on. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king. To do what? To make him a king. To make him a king. Read. He departed again into a mountain himself alone. Where we just read that? In Psalms, the second chapter. From there, let's go to the book of Deuteronomy 18, start at verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15. Come on. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet. A what? A prophet. Then we just read that in John chapter 6, verse 14, that prophet that should come into the world. Read this again. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren. Of thy brethren, meaning what? He's going to be like you. He's going to be an Israelite from the world of Israel. Come on. Like unto me. Uh-huh. Unto him ye shall hearken. Jump down to verse 18. Verse 18. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren. Come on. Like unto thee. And will put my words in his mouth. And do what? Will put my words in his mouth. Uh-huh. And he shall speak unto them. All that I shall command him. All that God shall command him. He said he's going to raise up a prophet from amongst the Israelites. He said unto this prophet you will listen. And everything that God commands him, that's what he would do. John chapter 5 verse 30. The book of John chapter 5 and verse 30. Come on. I can of my own self do nothing. That prophet said what? I can of my own self do nothing. Come on. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just. Why? Because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. Where do we read that? Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15. From there, give me Matthew chapter 17, verse 5. The book of Matthew chapter 17, verse 5. Come on. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. Uh-huh. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, 
This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Do what? Hear ye him. Because it was prophesied that what the Israelites would hearken to what this prophet would say. From there, let's go to the book of Psalms, uh, chapter 110 and verse 1. The book of Psalms, chapter 110 and verse 1. Come on. The Lord said unto my Lord. All right, let's slow down here. Read it again. The Lord said unto my Lord. Who's writing this? King David. He said, the Lord said unto my Lord. Who is King David's Lord? Let's find out. Sit thou at my right hand. Do what? Sit thou at my right hand. Uh-huh. Until I make thine enemies thy footstool. All right, so it says, the Lord said unto my Lord. Is this God talking to himself? Let's find out. Let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 2, and verse 29. Acts, chapter 2, verse 29. Come on. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his scepter is with us unto this day. Unto this day, come on. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to, with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins... According to the flesh. According to the flesh. Come on. He would raise up Christ. Who? Christ. Read. To sit on his throne. To do what? To sit on his throne. To sit on his throne. Come on. He, seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell. Uh-huh. Neither his flesh did see corruption. Read. This Jesus had God raised up. Roar off. We all were witnesses. Uh-huh. Therefore... Being by the right hand of God. Being where? By the right hand of God. That's where he's sitting on that throne, on the right hand of the Father. Remember he said, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit on the right hand. Come on. Exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost. Read. He had shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. Come on. For David is not ascended into the heavens. So it's showing you just in case, you know, there's a doctrine out there. They say that's that's talking about King David. It's not talking about King David. It just cut you and said, for David is not ascended to the heavens. David is not sitting on the right hand of God. Jesus Christ is sitting on the right hand of God. That's right. Read. But he said himself, the Lord said unto my Lord, Come on. Sit thou on my right hand. So he's setting the record straight. Just in case you thought that's what it was talking about, that's not what it was talking about. Read. Until I make thy foes thy footstool. From there, let's go to the book of Dan Daniel, chapter 10 and verse 5. The book of Daniel, chapter 10 and verse 5. Come on. Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked. And behold, a certain man clothed in linen, uh -huh. whose loins were girded with fine gold of you fast. So after David fasted for three weeks, the Most High God showed him a vision. All right? He showed him a vision. And let's, see, let's find out what this vision is. His body also was like the barrel. And his face as the appearance of light. Come on. And his eyes as lamps of fire. His eyes as lamps of fire. Come on. And his arms and his feet. Like in color to polish brass. Uh-huh. And the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. Give me Revelations 1.13 real quick. So it said his eyes were as a lamp of fire. Then it says his feet like in color to polish brass. All right. And it says his voice. Uh, I'm sorry. In the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. Read this. Revelation chapter 1 verse 13. Come on. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks. One like unto the Son of Man, uh -huh. clothed with a garment down to the foot, Read. and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. Come on. His head and his hairs were white like wool. He had woolly textured hair. Come on. As white as snow. Read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Right here in Daniel it says lamps of fire and Revelation says flame of fire. Why? Because in Genesis 49 it says his eyes will be red with wine. Come on. And his feet. Like unto fine brass. Like in fine brass. Like into color. Meaning what? That's the color of his arms and feet. Like unto fine brass. Which is brownish like copper or a penny. Read. As if they burned in a furnace. So not only was he dark skinned, he was extremely dark skinned. Read. And his voice as the sound of many waters. And Daniel says like the multitude. Who is this talking about? The son of man. Who is the son of man? Jesus the Christ. From there, let's go to Daniel the third chapter and start at the 23rd verse. The book of Daniel, chapter 3 and verse 23. Come on. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, 
Abednego. Who are they? They're the three holy children. Come on. Fell down, bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Uh huh. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? This is the going into the fiery furnace. All right. They did that to put them to death. So let's find out what, what's going to happen. Read. They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, lo, I see four men. Wait, 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 wait a minute. He just asked the question. Didn't I see, didn't I send three men down there? Then he says, what? He answered and said, lo, I see four men. He sees how many? Four men. Come on. Loose, walking in the midst of the fire. So you put these Israelite men, these boys down there, walking in the midst of the fire. Walking in the midst of the fire. Who does that? Who has the spiritual powers to walk in the midst of fire? You put three down there, but now there's four. Read on. And they have no hurt. And they have what? No hurt. Why? And the form of the fourth is like the son of God. The form of the fourth is like who? The son of God. Who is the son of God? Jesus the Christ. He gave them the power to walk through the midst of the fire. Where are we reading that from? The Old Testament. Psalms chapter 40 verse 7. The book of Psalms, chapter 40, verse 7. Come on. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. Christ said he come in the volume of the book. Why? It is written of me. This whole Bible was written about our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And with that, we say shalom. 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 of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.